In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the terminal and how to do some things in the terminal, such as launching applications, checking out system logs, using apt-get as a means of updating and installing new packages and software, and other miscellaneous utility functions. Now, the terminal that you see up on the screen is the basic GNOME terminal that comes with Ubuntu Linux, and it's a way to operate and to interact with the overall Linux system that's underneath the graphical environment. Using ls is an easy way to list the files in the current directory. The tilde sign that you see to the left of the blinking cursor stands for our user's home directory. This particular user is named Joe, and we are currently in Joe's home directory. CD is a command to stand for change directory. If we wanted to change into the text directory, we could simply type CD text, and we will go into that text directory. Typing CD home brings us back up a level. We can also use tab completion, CD, T, E, and then tab to fill in the rest. And we can also do CD, two periods, instead of tilde, to go up a level. Tilde brings us back home no matter where we are. The two periods brings us up a level depending on where we are. In this case, it happens to be the same place. Now, uh, the terminal can be a helpful place to launch certain applications, or really any applications, for a variety of reasons. Almost every single application, if not every single application, on a Linux system, even if it has a very nice icon and a menu entry in the application's menu also has a command line command to launch the same application. For example, this Abbey Word word processor. We can launch Abbey Word here in the menu, but we can also launch Abbey Word from the terminal. And we can test it out by starting to type out the word Abbey and then using tab, and that fills in the rest of the command. Most of the time, the command to launch an application is the same as the name of the application, but not every single time. One classic example is Firefox, the web browser. Oftentimes, the command is actually Mozilla-Firefox. But in this case, Abbey Word is the same, so we simply type Abbey Word and hit return, and that will launch the Abbey Word application, just as if we had launched the application from the menu itself. Now the reason why this is helpful is that sometimes if an application has errors or problems or there are issues with launching an application, you will see those errors and messages in the terminal. In this particular case, Abbey Word did not print anything, meaning Abbey Word launched without any issue. Now not every message that gets listed in the terminal when you launch an application necessarily means that there's a problem. Some applications sort of spit out system messages sort of telling the system what it's doing and what it's initializing, what kinds of things it's it's setting up prior to launching. So not every message is a bad message. Some of the messages are simply in, you know informational messages. But speaking of messages, those application messages and other system messages are something else that, that are helpful to look at and is one way to use the terminal. There is a graphical tool in system in in the system menu under administration called system log, which is a way to view some of the system logs that are underlying the Linux system, such as the XORG log and the messages log. Those are very handy to take a look at. These logs are located, as you can see in the tool itself, slash var slash log. That is a directory in the main Linux file system. 